Clippers. What was rolling for you early? Um, just Coach Ralph drawing up plays for me to be successful. Um, my teammates finding me. That's really it. Um, they was finding me, and Coach Ralph knew how to get me the ball. So, uh, Jordan, did this uh, atmosphere make it difficult to run the offense at the end of the game? I mean, it's always loud in here, and I think in a lot of places. But you know, uh, I don't think it made it hard to run the the offense per se. But like make, repeating the play calls, obviously, it was really loud. But we have a lot of hand signals, and we try to repeat it. So I don't think that played a factor into us running the offense, though. Any other questions for the players? Jordan, you've been playing for Vanderbilt for five years. You you get this rivalry. You're from Nashville. Just you guys are having such a great start to this year. How much did this, I guess, game mean? You know, how do you feel like the, the rivalry um, maybe was juiced up a little bit today? Um, can you just talk about that? Um, honestly, going into today's game, it's just – another game on our schedule, and that's just how we approach every game that we have. Our next game is our most important. So, I mean, obviously there is the Vanderbilt versus Tennessee thing, but it was just another game for us, so we prepared for it just like we prepare for any other game. There was no pressure. There was no anything else added to it, just another game for us. What was it like dealing with the size advantage that Tennessee had in the paint? Uh, it's no different, you know, kind of Jordan's answer. I think you're going to see they had, they have big players. You're going to see that just about every team that we play. Um, and we prepared for them like we prepare for any other team. Uh, so we knew that they were, they were big. Um, I felt like there's some advantages for us as well. Um, but obviously – when you when you're not uh, locked into making sure that you're the you're the first person that's hitting them that you know today I think was the first game in the last six games or so that we were out rebounded um, and and that kind of takes a toll we we have to do all the little things right um, especially in the paint when we're playing players that are bigger than us and I thought today we were late getting to spots you know we didn't do a great job boxing out when we did some of the guards came in and took the rebounds so there's certainly some things we can clean up there. Um, but I never see that as a disadvantage. I see it as an opportunity. We just have to be a little bit tighter with how we defend and box out. You guys were right there for most of this one, yeah. and in the end had that scoring drought. Is it just a scoring drought, or was there something else you looked at and said, man, if we did that better, we would have won this game? It's a good question. I, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to have to go back and look at it to, to, to get really into the details, into the weeds. It didn't feel like uh, it, there was something else. I think – it felt like we had some really big missed opportunities. And I never think that, you know, I know sometimes a game comes down to the wire in the last four minutes, and that's really when you need to execute, when you need to get stops and you need to get great looks. Um, I felt like we did a pretty good job of that up until that point. And again, I'll say the same thing um, I said earlier. I think there were some missed opportunities, missed open shots, missed layups. We didn't shoot a free throw in the second half. I'll leave that there. Um, so I feel like there was a lot of things that when we go back and look, yeah, we want to we wanna win every game we play. I say that almost every time I talk to you guys. We do. But I still think there were some great things to take from today. So number one, I felt like my team fought hard. I felt like we fought. We were competitive. Um, and towards the end of the game, we just you know, missed some chances to, to have an opportunity to win the game. There are other things that we'll learn that we'll clean up, and that's what we're all about. Okay, we didn't do some things today that we should have and could have done to win the game, and that's what we have to look at. But when I leave here today, I'm going to tell my team, like I did in the locker room, and we fought hard. We competed, and we had a chance all the way up until about four minutes left into the game, and then it just kind of fell apart on us. I'm proud of them for that, and I think it's certainly something that we'll, we'll take away and build on. Coach, Rakia Jackson obviously yeah. gets a lot of acclaim. Couldn't play that, that fourth quarter. Apparently some kind of illness, something issue on the bench. The Jewel Spear three, when it was tied 62-62, and then she hit that three, is, mm -hmm. was that sort of a slight tipping point? Because Tennessee was reeling a bit trying to get used to Rakia not being on the floor. Yeah, I mean, a wide open three is never great at that point in the game, <laughs> you know, when, when they make it. But there was still enough time left where I felt like we would make a big play of our own. 
I think the thing that disappointed me most about that play was some miscommunication on defense that actually let it happen. You know, it wasn't something that we haven't gone over or anything difficult. I feel like when we get into those situations and have been throughout the course of the year, our defense always locks up. And we, we do a pretty good job of making sure that we get a stop. And at that point, you know, Rakia Jackson or not, we, did, we, you know, we made a mistake that we can't make. We, made, um, we had a miscommunication. I'll have to go back and look. But she got a wide open look, and she made it. And that's what players do, you know? Players make plays. <laughs> Quick follow-up. I was asked, you know, before the game, what do you think? I said, it's Tennessee Bandy. It's a toss-up. I mean, yeah. I, you don't know. That's how this series plays out. Yeah. With the SEC expanding, the home-and-home home goes away. This yeah. is the last year for it. Are you, are you it, kind of sad to see it go? I get it because, you know, you got to accommodate Texas, Oklahoma. But is it a good home-and-home home over the years? I know you haven't been there that long, but you understand the rivalry. I do. I do. Um, yeah, I mean, is it is it isn't there going to be one home and home? I kind of feel like they're going to pick us. It is going to rotate every year. Yeah. Oh, 14. Yeah. Sheesh. Um, yeah, I think I think there's you know there's some good things about bringing in two incredible teams, and then there's things that you'll miss. But um, whenever I look at the the way that the landscape is changing, I think and I'm a younger coach. I mean, not that young, but you know, newer. I know um, when I when I played here, was walking out on the court today. I remember coming to camp here, and thinking about um, all the great memories I had of Pat Summit and and the other coaches that kind of laid the foundation for the competitive conference that we play in, that I get to coach in now. And and when I go to the meetings, I think about. <laughs> you know, how hard it is probably to get on the same page with so many coaches to figure out a way to help the game grow. And so there are things that we'll lose as we continue to, go, to grow the game, like our home and home. But, I, but I'm trying to look at the opportunity that we have to bring in two other teams, like I'm sure the coaches that came before us looked at opportunities to help grow the game and grow the conference. And I'm hopeful um, that something, you know, something new will happen, a new rivalry, a new opportunity. Um, for us as coaches in this conference and for our players to make sure that we stay the best conference in the country. I'll miss the home and home, um, but I'm looking forward to, to seeing what the, the new look of our conference holds. With Justine making a return here, is there anything as a coach you say to somebody returning to their former team, or how do you handle that whole thing? Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, I think you just you, you kind of pay attention to them and how they're handling it. I don't, you don't ignore it with Justine. It's something that we talked about. Um, and then it's an, op it's an opportunity for her to grow and mature. I know it wasn't easy for her, um, but I thought that she did some really great things today, and she battled through and she fought. And, um, and I also think the past is the past. And so as you, you know, that's how you have to look at it. It's gone. It's over. She's here with us now. Um, she's playing in a gym that she used to practice in a lot and play in a lot. But this is, you know, this isn't her school anymore. And I wanted her to look at it as, you know, a, a growing opportunity where, yeah, you know, I'm sure she struggled at some points. Um, but we're really happy to have her. And I thought today that she did some great things to help our team have a chance to win the game. I was really, really proud of her. I know that freshman Camille Pierre has had a lot of attention. I know this being her first year. But somebody who played uh, big today was Aga. Can you talk about how important she was hitting a couple of threes for you guys? Yeah, Aga was great today. Aga's a tough kid, um, and you know there's a level of toughness she's, that she has just based on what she's had to do to get here that exists inside of her that I can't coach, right? So she has to get stronger. That's clear. She's a freshman. She, there's some things that she has to get better at when it re relates to her skill um, level, but that kid's not going to back down from anyone, and she's come too far away from home. She's gone through too much to do that, and you saw a little bit of that fire in her today. Um, and each of our freshmen and our newcomers have ups and downs. That's part of the transition from where they were to where they are now. And this, you know, this conference, every game is like Armageddon. <laughs> you know, you go in, you better be ready to fight for your life. And, and they're starting to figure out what that feels like in the moment, what the preparation needs to be to be ready for that, and how you get to continue um, to do that day after day to be you know, an elite player, and that's what Aga wants to be. Aga wants to be a pro, she wants to be an Olympian. 
Um, and today I was, I was excited to see that fire inside of her that I know I can't coach her to have. I think that's only going to mean, you know, great things for her as she keeps getting better. Thank you guys so much.